Explorers. Well, the French, the French, we got the French. And the English explorers, we got them here right now, and that's what we're looking at today. So, they're exploring where? Well, North America. Alright, so this is North America. You might be familiar with the location. And we're looking at the French and English explorers. Four, particularly. The first man, his name is Jacques Cartier. Um. Now, Jacques Cartier, he was a French man, um, and his first voyage, he sails in 1534. So in 1534, he sails to America, and instead of going down where the Spanish were, in the Caribbean, Central America, he stays up north. So, if you look in the small map on the right, he's staying up above uh, where Maine is. So above Maine in Canada, which is known as the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Um, he's looking for a, a western passage to Asia. He does not find one, but he does need a great deal of success mapping an area which had never before been mapped by Europeans. Uh, it's actually pretty close to where the Vikings we're landing. So Jacques Cartier, he very much opens up this northern part of North America. Samuel de Champlain. Well, as you might guess, Lake Champlain, one of the great lakes, is named after this man. Also French. And he's the first one that really makes an ap or accurate map of the coasts in Canada. And he establishes some settlements. Um, so his face is right here. Uh, Samuel de Champlain, great mustache, fantastic mustache actually, and uh, looks like a little lazy eye. So he sails in, similar to the places where Cartier sails. But he sails all the way down the St. Lawrence River uh, into Lake Champlain, named after him, Lake Huron, and Lake Ontario. So he very much more explores the inland part of the Americas. If you look, he settles and founds Quebec City. So Cartier just explores Champlain. He helps found a city, so permanent settlement of the French in North America. Um, so 1608 he arrives in Quebec and Quebec is now settled. So the French have a foothold in North America. English, not to be outdone, they send a man named John Cabot over to North America. Uh, John Cabot goes exploring in 1497 and also stays in this northern part of the United States, well what is now the United States and Canada. Um, so it's a fairly short voyage but he is establishing now the English have some knowledge about what is in this land. Henry Hudson follows in John Cabot's footsteps and he sails far more extensively, namely, he goes up the Hudson River, uh, aptly named after him. So if you've ever been to New York City, New York City is at the mouth of the Hudson. So he sails to Canada, he sails down past the arm of Massachusetts, Cape Cod, uh, goes as far south down as, you know, Maryland down here, but he does go up all the way up the Hudson River. So he sees what kind what kinds of land is available for the English to settle. And when you have the pilgrims and other English groups that are coming, they know that this land is here, and there aren't other Europeans that have already settled on it. Other than those French up in Quebec and traders that are moving from there, the English know that much of this land, it's empty, other than for native tribes. And as we know, the native tribes have been decimated 
absolutely decimated by disease.